at 0430 hours. A radar operator's screen lit up with six hostile contacts, heading straight for the USS George Washington Carrier Strike Group. Venezuelan warships had just positioned themselves for what would become the most lopsided naval confrontation in modern history. What those Venezuelan commanders didn't know was that they'd already been tracked for 72 hours by an invisible submarine. Their 1970s missiles were locked and targeted before they even realized it, and American systems had calculated their complete destruction in under seven minutes. If you want to see how this impossible standoff ended, hit that subscribe button now because what happens next will shock you. Within 90 seconds of detection, every American vessel went to battle stations. But Venezuela was facing something far worse than they could see on their outdated radar screens. The Billion Dollar Floating City The USS George Washington isn't just a warship, it's a nuclear-powered metropolis at sea displacing 100,000 tons, with a crew of 5,000 sailors and marines. This single vessel carries more firepower than most nations' entire militaries, with 75 aircraft capable of launching strikes up to 1,000 miles away. The ship's two nuclear reactors generate enough electricity to power a city of 100,000 people, and can run for 25 years without refueling. To put this in perspective, Venezuela's entire operational surface fleet combined weighs less than this one carrier. Yet someone in Caracas decided this was a fight worth picking. But the carrier itself wasn't even the most dangerous thing the Venezuelan Navy was about to face, because what they saw on their radar screens was only a fraction of what was actually hunting them. Venezuela's desperate gamble revealed. Six Venezuelan warships left Puerto Cabello that morning with orders that would seal their fate before they even reached international waters. The frigate Almirante Brian led the formation, a 30-year-old Italian design that cost Venezuela $80 million when they bought it, now worth maybe $20 million in scrap value. Behind her, four Guaycari-class patrol boats and one Constitution-class corvette followed, carrying a combined total of 16 Automat anti-ship missiles that were cutting-edge technology when Jimmy Carter was president. Venezuela's entire defense budget for 2024 barely reached $438 million, meaning this confrontation risked nearly 15% of their operational naval assets for a political photo opportunity. The crews aboard those ships had trained for years but their equipment hadn't been updated since the Cold War ended, and American intelligence had been reading their communications for the past 72 hours, knowing every move before they made it. The Aegis System's Silent Death Sentence The moment Venezuelan hulls crossed into the detection range, something happened that their commanders never saw coming, because it occurred at the speed of light. American destroyers activated their AN-SPA-1D phased array radar systems, four massive octagonal panels that can track a baseball-sized object from over 300 kilometers away. Within 0.3 seconds, not three seconds, but three-tenths of a single second, every Venezuelan vessel became a locked target in a network that was simultaneously calculating their speed, heading, and the exact number of missiles needed to sink them. The Aegis combat system had already determined that two SM-2 missiles per target would guarantee a 98% kill probability. And with 96 vertical launch cells per destroyer, the Americans could have engaged the entire Venezuelan fleet six times over before running out of ammunition. What made this truly terrifying was that Venezuelan radar operators were still trying to identify the American ships when the firing solutions were complete. Their 1970s British radar systems couldn't even detect that they'd been locked onto. The three billion dollar shadow below. While surface ships played their dangerous game above the waves, a Virginia-class attack submarine had positioned itself in the perfect ambush point between the Venezuelan formation and their home port. This underwater predator cost $3.45 billion to build, more than Venezuela's entire annual military budget and represented technology so advanced that even talking about its full capabilities remains classified. The submarine's sonar suite could hear the distinct sound signature of Venezuelan diesel engines from 200 kilometers away, picking up the rhythmic thump of their propellers 
through multiple layers of ocean, like a doctor hearing a heartbeat through a stethoscope. Her pump jet propulsion system made her practically silent, generating less noise than a pod of whales swimming past, while her 25 Mark 48 ADCAP torpedoes carried enough explosive power to break any surface ship in half with a single hit. 22 seconds from World War III. At 0547 hours, a weapons officer aboard one of the Venezuelan patrol boats made a decision that brought both nations to the edge of actual combat. He activated his ship's fire control radar, a Selenia Orion RTN-10X system that began painting the USS George Washington with targeting quality electromagnetic emissions. In naval warfare doctrine, followed by every major navy on Earth, this action represents hostile intent and legally justifies an immediate defensive response because you don't lock your weapons onto someone unless you plan to shoot. The American Electronic Warfare Suite detected the radar emission in microseconds, and what happened next unfolded faster than human perception can process. The USS Porter automatically triggered its ANSLQ-32 electronic warfare system. Jamming equipment activated, 4FA-18. Super Hornets sitting on the catapults received launch authorization. Combat Air Patrol pilots already airborne got weapons-free status and fire control solutions updated across the entire carrier strike group. The commander who saved everyone. An unnamed Venezuelan officer aboard the Almirante Brion made a decision that prevented his ships from becoming underwater tombs and his sailors from becoming casualties in a war nobody actually wanted. He contacted the American Carrier Strike Group on VHF Channel 16, the International Maritime Frequency, and announced in carefully chosen diplomatic language that his patrol mission had been successfully completed and his formation would now return to port. The phrasing was absolutely brilliant because it allowed the Venezuelan government to claim they'd confronted American naval power and demonstrated national sovereignty while simultaneously giving the Americans a peaceful resolution without forcing either side to explicitly admit they'd backed down. Professional military judgment had overridden political pressure and this commander probably understood something his civilian leadership didn't. Modern naval warfare isn't decided by courage or determination, but by technology, training, and the cold mathematics of weapons systems. The world never learned how close this came to disaster. Just 22 seconds separated routine patrol from international incident. One professional officer's decision to ignore political pressure and follow military judgment saved countless lives on both sides. Modern naval warfare proved it's not about bravery or national pride, it's about technology. And Venezuela's 1970s equipment never stood a chance against America's networked combat systems. If this breakdown of the most lopsided naval standoff in recent history opened your eyes, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because we're covering military encounters the mainstream media won't touch. And trust me, the next one is even more shocking.